All right, folks, how are you doing? So here's an example from The Walking Dead, which has turned into an absolute fucking shit show. I haven't watched that in like two or three years now. I'm more interested in watching uh, Philly Issues guy and um, what's the other guy's name? Uh, dismantling it than actually watching the show because they point out how ridiculous it is. Philly Issues guy and Joe, that was it, Joe Dirty Locks. You know, uh, they do a better job of uh, tearing the show apart and how ridiculous it is. And it's a lot more fun than actually watching the show. So I haven't watched them for quite a while either. But anyway, let's get into the clip. Step in. Now, let me ask you a question right off the bat. Would an empath or a normal torture people or enjoy torturing people or feel the need to torture people? Answer on all three fronts is no. Hell no. Fuck no. Don't you worry. We'll have Carson fix you all up. He's thirsty. And this is how the low-level narcissist, which is what I believe Negan is, so I'm by no means the expert, but... Seems to me like pretty lesser narcissistic behavior. You know, getting in people's face, lack of boundary recognition, violating people's personal territory, you know, rubbing it in, subtle insults, name calling, etc, etc. They're basically train wrecks. They're wrecking balls that destroy everything and everyone and eventually themselves. Which pretty much sums up Negan excellently. Yeah. Oh hell, I forgot. Your mouth is all puffed up like a baboon's ass. Now what's really disturbing is all the female reactors I used to watch when I was watching The Walking Dead going on about how I love Negan. He, he's just so funny. He's no, he's just so charming. And I'm just like, ladies, you do not have a future. In 10 or 15 years, you're going to be in wine box and cat land if you think this is sexy and attractive. The alarm bell should be going off that this is what you need to avoid. Not go for because I know female nature quite well. They love the bad boys, but they don't realize narcissists are bad boys and bad boys never settle down. They're exciting in the short term. In the long term, you're going to be the subject of sustained evaluation. Need a straw. D. Give him a straw. Hence why I chose this scene to demonstrate that. Oh, what's wrong with you? And by the way, narcissists isn't just males who are uh, devaluing females. It goes the other way around as well. It applies to both genders. And this can be across the board any type of relationship. Not necessarily a romantic one or an intimate one, but devaluation is very much a part of the narcissist AMO. He's that guy. Breaking people down, hence why Daryl here is in a hideous jumpsuit. He hustles. I like hustle. But believe it or not, things weren't always cool between us. Only a narcissist would say this or think in this way. He burned half his fucking head, you know, his head off, his face off, and things are cool between us. A normal would never think in those terms. Because in a narcissist world, they're the only person in it. Everything and everyone else is a toy, is an appliance is a tool, is not a person, not a human being. A normal person would not burn someone's face off and say that things were cool between them. You're operating on a whole nother level of delusion if you think that. And of course, that is exactly what the narcissist does. The narcissist lives in the world of delusions. They live in their own little world. Dear. It doesn't even call him by his name, by the way. D, as in, you know... <laughs> Doesn't even have a name, like I've said. It only reinforces the point. He worked for points. Him and his super hot wife and her. Describing someone's partner as their super hot wife right in front of them to their face. Who would do that? A narcissist. Would he an empath? Would a normal? No. Super hot sister. But she sis. 
She needed meds. And that shit is hard to scavenge, so it costs more. Sis fell behind on points, so I asked her to marry me. Point system is very reptilian. Hierarchy is very reptilian. Narcissism is reptilian. Does that mean that narcissists are shapeshifters? No, that's not what I mean. The inner core of our brain is our fight, freeze, or flight, which is the reptilian system. So the human brain actually operates on multiple different levels. So when I say reptilian, I mean that they're operating primarily out of the reptilian brain. Told her I would take care of her in sickness and in health. Blah. Because remember that narcissism is a self-defense mechanism. Well, if narcissism is a self-defense mechanism, it's operating primarily out of the reptilian brain, which is fight freeze or flight and also the need for hierarchy authority and control hence why we're talking about the points system blah 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 because i am a stand-up guy okay he burnt somebody's face off and thinks he's a stand-up guy he makes people into slaves operating on a point system and thinks he's a stand-up guy talks about somebody's wife right in front of them as being super hot and their sister being super hot right in front of them and thinks he's a stand-up guy Living in a very delusional world, suffice it to say. Attractive? Yeah, because we love to tease the animal and we love to get the approval of the authority figure. Especially a reptilian authority figure. And like I've said, that does not mean a shapeshifter, that means somebody operating primarily out of the reptilian brain. Operating from the reptilian self-defense mechanism of having to micromanage and micro-control everything and everyone around them. And deal with threats to that control with a sledgehammer. She tells me that she's going to think about it. Well, that was the wrong thing to say to a narcissist because you're threatening their control. The next thing you know, I'm dealing with an orange situation. Oh, wait. Okay, so this woman and her sister didn't want to be married, air quotes, to this reptilian authoritarian control freak tyrant who puts them on a point system and makes them slaves. Well, I have to say I'm really surprised. Dwighty boy here stole all the medication and took off with his super hot wife and my super hot maybe soon to be fiance. Yeah, it's a farce to call that a marriage. That's basically a harem. So I had to send my guys after him. No, you didn't. You could have let them go, but, you know. Being a narcissist, he has to control everything and everyone that comes upon his radar. Even if that means wasting resources on going after three people who are probably not really that important. And the medications that they stole. He didn't go after the medications, by the way. He went after the three people because they're under his thumb. And he has to control them. And he can't operate, you know, with threats to his control out there not being under his control. Because you're dealing with a narcissist. Because I can't let something like that stand. There are rules. There are rules. Three words that sum up the reptilian mindset of a narcissist perfectly. Especially a lesser narcissist like this one. Cost me an arm and a leg going after him. And you know what, Dwighty boy? <sighs> That look of triumph, that look of gloat, that look of conceit and pride, that is a look of a narcissist who has won. He still got away. But here's the thing. D, he saw the light. He manned up. Look at the dead look in the eyes of the victim of the narcissist who's under sustained evaluation. See other clips of Dwight, this character, based on his interactions with Negan for that. He is continually being bullied, continually under the thumb, continually being insulted all the time because you're dealing with a narcissist, obviously. Look at the dead look in his face. They love he it. He came back. He asked for my forgiveness. I like that. Oh, I like that. Yeah, because I'm drawing fuel from him. That means emotions, particularly negative emotions, are necessary for narcissists. Positive emotions... Uh, as in positive feelings from others, that's all fine and good, but being reptilian, they thrive more upon the negative. Because of course they do, because they're fucking reptilian! Made me take notice. 
And look at that. <laughs> Daryl is terrified. But Daryl being, in my opinion, probably a normal. Uh, you know. He, of course he is. But the seal. See, that's the thing about narcissists, especially lesser ones. They're totally without fear. They're incapable of processing fear as an emotion. Well, in terms of themselves being afraid. They enjoy the fear of other people, that being said. But in terms of them being scared, them being afraid, well, yeah, sure, they have fight, freeze, or flight like everybody else does. But they're very audacious because their narcissism doesn't allow them to be afraid. If they were afraid, they wouldn't do it. That's why it's not permitted. Yeah. You know how she is. She is a... See, look how close he is to his face here. Normals don't get this close to your face and grin in your face while they're intimidating you, nor do empaths. Only narcissists do this. Stickler for the rules. Again, going on about rules, hierarchy, authority. This is very reptilian. So do I. He begged me not to kill Sherry. Which, of course, gave him fuel. Which I thought was kind of cute, so... No, he just recognized it was fuel from a, a, a source. Well, I was just going to kill him. But then Sherry says that she will marry me if I let Dwight live. In other words, I'll just be your prostitute, in other words. <laughs> marriage, that's not what marriage is. Give me a fucking break. Which, if you think about it, that's a pretty screw. Ladies, if you think Negan is a sexy character and he's cute and he's sweet and he's funny, would, do you want to be his prostitute? Living in a harem with six other, seven other prostitutes? You're not allowed to see the men that you came in with? The men that you actually love? That you've got to do everything that he says? Well, there's a reason why Fifty Shades of Grey did so well. But, you know, that charm, that um, novelty... I think it's probably the word for it. That wears off pretty fast when it really happens to you. You know, just saying, ladies, when it actually happens to you, you will fucking know about it. Don't be that stupid. Screwed up deal, because I was going to marry her sister until she wound up dead, but Sherry is super hot. Anyways, it was a start. But it wasn't enough. Well, of course not, because, you know, he's a, a primary source of fuel, so you have to continually wear him down, break him down, so he's under your thumb, and draw fuel from him. Because every relationship with a narcissist is abusive, and the longer it goes, the more abusive it, go it becomes. So Dwight, he got the iron, and then I married a super hot wife. Ex. Wife. See, they always have to rub it in. They always have to rub your face and shit. And then after all that, he still got on board. And now look at him. Bow! One of my top guys. Yeah, he's not going to betray you at all. Spoilers. And we are totally cool. <laughs> By totally cool, he's under my thumb completely and I can draw fuel from him. You know, because he's a primary source. But that's all he is. He's not a human being. He's a source of fuel. He's a toy for Negan to play with. He's just an appliance. And that's all you will be if you end up in that situation as well. Pay heed, pay attention, and learn. The point being, I think you can be that guy. Uh, fuck no. <laughs> can I leave? I do not want to be that guy. No fucking way.